I'm not sure why, but a Chinese seller on eBay was selling American uh, socket covers, the illuminated ones, the ones that LEDs built in, uh, on the UK website. And they're, I'm guessing they probably didn't sell that many because ultimately this is our type of socket we have here. And it's not a cover plate and separate socket. You can get that arrangement if you wish for different styles of covers, but it's usually all integrated into one unit. While I'm, uh, while I'm uh, covering this subject, because let's take this to bits in a moment, uh, this is the wiring we use in the UK for our circuits. Here's the old wiring, which it, we call it twin and earth, and it's basically solid core wire for the smaller sizes. And it's got the sleeved uh, phase and neutral, uh, and then it's got an unsleeved earth, a slightly smaller cross-sectional area. The new colours to comply with European requirements, apparently, uh, are brown for live, blue for neutral, and, of course, the earth in the middle again of the same sort of cross-sectional area and unsleeved and we put a little bit of sleeve over it when we uh, when we terminate the cables the green yellow sleeve so this socket uh, cover has wings in the side it's got a sort of double layer thing it's got the outer tabs to cover the connections let's zoom in here a little bit so we can take a closer look at this it's got the outer tabs to cover the wires coming up and then it's got brass rivets uh, copper rivets inside and the idea is that when you put this uh, on you can take the existing cover plate off the wall, you can put this one on, and these little co springy copper contacts will then make contact with the side connections where the terminations go, the wires are terminated into the socket. And the idea is that just simply by replacing that cover with this one, you end up the night light that detects it when it's dark and uh, brings on the LEDs underneath. So let's open this up and see what makes it tick inside. There's not enough room. Well, I say there's not enough room. I'm not really sure. I've not looked inside yet for a capacitive dropper. I'm thinking it's going to be resistive. It's only rated about half a watt. And I'm guessing the optical detector will just shunt the LEDs out as it normally does. It's heat staked together. And oddly, they've kind of missed this uh, heat stake rivet here. It doesn't look like, they, like they've even touched it, but it also doesn't look long enough. I'm not sure what's happened there. But let's uh, pop all these out and see what we find inside. So I'll burst that plastic heat stake rivet as well. And that one. So I was kind of expecting the circuitry to go down either side as well, but it's just a wire going down either side. Okay. Yeah, that's strange. That looks like also a mal malformed rivet, 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 rivet. It's just a small stem. So here's the circuit board. It's actually got quite a lot of circuitry on it, but it looks to me like a resistive dropper, right? Okay, this is where it's always advantageous if I take a picture and zoom in it. So I shall do that right now. So I have to admit, this is actually more sophisticated than I was expecting it. It, it is actually using a capacitive dropper and the capacitor is tiny. It really is. This is a capacitor it's using as the main dropper capacitor here. It's minute. I wonder what the voltage rating of that is. Let's reverse engineer it. So uh, we've got the mains coming in, the line supply from the wall. Uh, line power, as some countries call it, mains as we call it. It comes in and rather oddly it goes through two resistors. That's this resistor and this resistor. The first one is 22 ohms. I'm guessing that might be effectively being used as a fuse, although it's immediately followed by a higher power rated 271, 2710, 270 ohm resistor, which will be limiting the inrush current to the circuit. Uh, not sure which one of those would give first. Pro possibly the small fuse would give first, the small resistor, if there was a fault and a lot of current flowed. It then goes to the classic capacitive dropper arrangement, and we've got the capacitor and a resistor across it. In a way, the discharge resistor, I suppose, yeah, it's useful to have it on there because uh, otherwise, if people pulled the plate off from a live socket and then touched the pins at the back, they could get a wee zing off it. But, um, other than that, it's a bit of a moot point. If it was in circuit, when you turned the power off, anything else in the ring main, uh, the ring circuit or the radial circuit, would actually discharge that uh, capacitor. So then it goes to a bridge rectifier, and the bridge rectifier is quite interesting because it's actually formed from two components. This, uh, this end of the circuit board goes to one part of the bridge rectifier, and this end of the circuit board goes via the capacitive dropper, to the other end, so let's just note those values. I reckon that capacitor, the closest value you can get, standard value from measuring it, because there is a resistor in series in parallel with it, is 220 nanofarad with a 470k resistor. That's 474, 474 zeros, 470,000 ohms. 
Uh, the components, the rectifier is ACN, ACN plus, minus, I'll just draw a lazy bridge rectifier as I usually do. But it is formed, well I'm going to draw the full rectifier now because in a, a conventional rectifier looks like this, full bridge rectifier. So all the diodes point towards a positive connection. So that's a positive, that's a negative, and I'm going to draw two points here because that's how it's actually formed. So the AC is coming in here to the bridge rectifier, the limited AC, and the output is going to these uh, through these diodes to the positive end and the negative end, but to split it up, to actually facilitate easier operation of the circuit board, the device, which is, in, is a KAE, was the reference, and initially I was thinking, is that a transistor? Because it was marked Q1, and it was marked Q1 and Q3, so that kind of hinted at transistors, but it didn't make sense in the circuit. So looking up KAE, I typed in diode package, KAE diode, and this is when I found that there's a 350 volt uh, diode package with two diodes in each. And by putting two of them end to end, uh, they basically, they can make a bridge rectifier, but they can spread out across the circuit board. So that's, this is part of the bridge rectifier, and this is part of the bridge rectifier. These two components here. The output then follows a very standard topology for these type of night lights. The LEDs are wired in series. One, two, three LEDs in series. And one lazy little beam of light coming out there. And that's uh, these components here. They're side emitting LEDs that are side emitting into uh, a plastic uh, lens assembly at the bottom of the light here, just to, well, presumably to block the holes up, maybe channel some of the light down through the bottom. Uh, there's also another little lens which goes through the front uh, of the cover here. And that is for a, what I'm guessing is a phototransistor. It actually says LED4. It could be an LED, actually. I very much doubt it. It could be an infrared LED being used as a light sensor, but it's highly unlikely. It's more likely a phototransistor or photodiode. Now that's got me wondering. The package is quite interesting for that. If this is the standard surface mount package with a little sort of dink in at each end, and it's got a little clear window on top, the... An electro goes in at this side, an electro goes in at this side, and then the chip inside is mounted diagonally, and it has a sort of outline top like that. That goes to the bottom, and then there's a little solder uh, link, about a gold wire bond goes on over to that electrode. It's quite neat inside, actually. It's quite a smart little looking little thing. I've got the sniffles, so I'm going to apologise if I involuntarily sniff. I'm going to do it. <laughs> That's better. The aftermath of a cold. I don't normally get colds, but uh, it's there's been so many going around at the moment it was inevitable I was going to get one. And once you've got it, I suppose that's it over, hopefully. So uh, the output of this also has another capacitor across it. And it's a very small capacitor, but the value of that, that capacitor, which is this little capacitor here, measures at somewhere, you know, it's quite hard to measure because it's in circuit. I'd guess it's somewhere... 2.7 to 3.3 .3 microfarad. It's around about that value. Quite a high value for such a tiny ceramic capacitor, but that is fairly common these days, isn't it? They really cram in the layers. That's why they're kind of fragile. Uh, then there is, unusually, it's marked SA. It's a MOSFET. I thought that was just going to be a standard NPN type transistor, but it's a MOSFET. Uh, let's see if I can actually draw a MOSFET properly. So let's start with the three bits in the middle. Uh, that one is going up to the positive rail. This one is going down to the negative rail. It's an N-channel MOSFET. That's more or less right. And then there's a sort of parasitic diode across this. which also acts as some form of protection, I'm guessing. Um, and what actually happens is when this uh, transistor, this MOSFET, turns on, it turns the lights off. So because it basically shorts them out, which may seem inefficient, but uh, that's how it works. Then there's a very simple bridge between this thing marked LED4 and R... Is it R1? I think it is R1. I'm looking at, they've left a component off called 
R2, which is just across that capacitor. I wonder why. They've just kind of copied. It looks like they've copied a uh, um, standard LED lamp schematic and they've included the facility for all the components. I thought that might have been another capacitor position, but it's not. Apparently it's a resistor position which isn't used. But then, mystery component. I'm not sure what this is. Let's just draw it as a phototransistor. Like this. I might be wrong, but it's a light sensor anyway. And that is fundamentally the circuit. So the uh, supply is current limited effectively. On each half wave, a small portion of current comes through this capacitor. It gets rectified so that the polarity is the same in each half wave and goes through to light the LEDs with a little bit of smoothing provided by this capacitor. When the ambient uh, light level in the room gets too bright for the LEDs to be lit, it basically turns this transistor on. This transistor, well, this resistor's uh, transistor, should I say, if it are optical sensors, a better description here, it gradually passes more current with intensity until this MOSFET turns on, and that then shunts the LEDs, and the current instead flows through the MOSFET. And that might seem wasteful, because effectively it would be drawing more power when it's uh, in during the day when it's in the off state. But in reality, all it appears is a small to the main supply. All it appears is a, is a capacitor across the supply. It's a entirely reactive load, so its power consumption will be low. Its power consumption is low anyway. This thing is supposedly only rated about half a watt, which makes sense because 220 nanofarad is quite a low value on a 120 volt supply for a capacitive dropper. And that's fundamentally it. It's more complex than I was expecting. It's quite neat, actually. But I do wonder, that capacitor there is tiny, the dropper capacitor. That's going to have the best part of, well, let's uh, work it out. That's going to have 120 volt supply times 1.41. The peak voltage across that is going to be about 170 volts ish, uh, which is quite a high voltage across such a tiny little component capacitor. I'm not sure that'll be rated. But, um, yeah, but that's the circuit then. It's quite neat, better than I was expecting. It's. I also was surprised by just how small the circuit board is that they got got it all into one strip at the bottom. I thought they were going to be hiding like rows of resistors down the sides here to try and spread the dissipation. I really wasn't expecting the capacitive dropper, but that's it. It is quite a smart little unit after all.